Hi, my name's Darren. Welcome. This is a bit of a story about uh, my journey of losing 100 kilos, approximately 230 pounds, from struggling to live, to loving and enjoying what life has to offer. So hopefully you enjoy my story, and get something out of it that for yourself or that you can offer somebody else and help somebody else along their journey as well. So here are a few photos of my journey, everything from when I was 10 through to my late 45, 46 years of age. Yes, I had that mulleted perm when I was 18. I don't know what I was thinking back then. But all the things I went through, I was still trying to be sport orientated, eat right, do the right thing. But I could just never get my weight down. I would have my cereal for breakfast because my local sporting hero was telling me to eat seven wheat picks in the morning. But then by mid-morning, morning, I was hungry again. Then by lunchtime, an afternoon, come home from school, have some to eat in the afternoon because you're hungry. It was just a never-ending cycle. But even though I was big, I always tried to play sport. I used to play football or cycle all the way through. It just didn't seem to, it, it was ebb and flow. It was up one time, down the next, up the next time, down the next. So I have struggled my whole 45 years to 47 years, first 47 years of my life with my weight in one way, shape or form. So go on a diet, they say. We've got the brand new thing for you. This is fantastic. So these are all the different things I tried over the periods. So first time was like Weight Watchers. I remember going when I was a kid at school, going on a Wednesday night back to my school where it was and having to get up on a scale every Wednesday night in front of these all these middle-aged people, you know. I was 16 or 17 and felt embarrassed and it was just, you know, it wasn't a right thing or a right way to do it. I've tried acupuncture. I've tried slim fast. I've tried the low fat. At some times there, all I'll be eating was steamed vegetables. You know, I just couldn't. That was what I was told was the way to go. Octafast, you know, the shakes, two meals a day, three meals a day. Here's the this, here's that, Herbalife. I was buying heaps of Herbalife. I, I think at one stage I was spending about $80 or $90 a week minimum on Herbalife and having something in my tea and a spoonful of this and a tablet of that to try and stop the stop the appetite. That's what it was. It was an appetite supplement. Xenical, I remember coming out, it was like, the doctor called me in and said, I've got this new wonder drug for you called Xenocow. Um, you know, so those things, I've tried everything. And even down the bottom there, that you'll see the reduced tablets. You've probably never heard of these before. I had never heard of these before. I even got that desperate. I was buying these tablets off my tailors in Thailand. So I go to my tailor in Thailand. He told me about these wonderful drugs. He was getting them in from India. And I go and get my shirts and pants made because I couldn't get them made anywhere else. I couldn't buy it off the rack. And so I was buying, you know, two lots of shirts and two lots of pants getting specially made and a couple of hundred of these tablets as well to try and help me lose weight. I didn't know what was in them, what other medication they were mixing with, what other side effects it would be. I just was desperate. I needed to lose the weight. And this is the only way I saw out. I didn't see any other option. I just couldn't change what I was doing to myself time and time again. So here's a list of all the different uh, medications I was on at one time or another, and some of them I was on three or four at the same time over the period of anything up to 10 to 15 years. I would have to have 10 visits to the GP every year minimum, two visits to my dermatologist, to the rheumatologist, and countless and many visits to the dietitian. Just nothing was working, nothing that I could do would take away the pain and the way my body was just breaking down with all these medications and the obesity and the inflammation that was that was just slowly building up. My body was slowly dying and breaking down. The sad part really looking back, and I blame myself for not taking control back then, but some of the side effects of some of these drugs were unbelievable. I remember the uh, uh 
I was told that I had to wait, if I wanted children, I had to wait 18 months to go off them before I could try to have children. That's unbelievable, that sort of a side effect that you're putting onto someone that's, you know, 24, 25. And I was on some of these drugs for nearly five to 10 years. You know, Mobic, I was on that for, I could be see 10 years. I was on methotrexate for about six or seven years. I remember having to set the alarm for the methotrexate every Sunday at the right time to take the 15 milligrams because it was drummed into me that if I overdose on it, it could be really bad for me. So some of the side effects of these things were absolutely terrible. I remember taking, having to take 200 milligrams of tramadol a morning just to get going in the morning to be able to go to work. It's 200, and if I didn't time it right, I'd nearly fall asleep driving to work. So I had to, I had to work out what dose I was on, what my timing was like, just so I could function daily at a work and try and still earn a living or be just a functioning adult. And that was just the wrong way to be. So it all came to a head um, September 2015. I was on the right there. I was at my uh, a friend's wedding in Bali and, you know, I was just uncomfortable. I was I was a broken person. I, that was the worst I'd ever been. I was just... I had to get the shirt made while I was there in Bali because I couldn't find anywhere else to get a shirt that fitted me for the wedding. You know, I was there happy and smiling, but you no, know, really inside I was in so much pain. I was a broken person. And you can't see it there, but I had 80% psoriasis coverage party score. I was bleeding. Um, I was wearing shirts. I was changing shirts and stuff like that as well. I had severe arthritis, pain, depression, anxiety. I was on the eight medications, plus you saw me beforehand, I was rattling every time I walked. My blood pressure was like 180 over 150. I had sleep apnea. I wasn't sleeping properly. You know, so it was just crazy situation. I went from Bali to Thailand. And when I was in Thailand after this wedding, um, a friend of mine told me about low carb, high fat through diet doctor. Didn't take much of it. Didn't take much notice and just kept on going. But that was my first... Uh, recognition or inkling that uh, I needed help. And that was my first introduction to the low carb, healthy fat way of eating and lifestyle. So that was it. I've done my research. I researched LCHF online. I was in my last, this is my last roll of dice. I was very much uh, contemplating um, taking my own life. It got to that stage in around that December, January period I found Diet Doctor online. So Diet Doctor, they sent you sent me a two-week meal eating plan, and that was it. I had no idea what I was doing, nothing at all. I took time off work due to bullying, bullying at work. I was being bullied at work and had issues at work, so I needed to complete break and just think of me for a change, and that's what ha had to happen. So from the January, things started to happen pretty quickly. From the January to the June. I'd lost 39 kilos. So six months, about 40 kilos. It was going off great. I didn't know what was happening. I couldn't work out how it was working. Why was this working other than other diets that I've been on before? So I started to research a little bit more and find out a little bit more about it. So back in the June then, I was 40 kilos lighter. So I started to go back to work three days a week. I used to ride to and from work every day about five and a half kilometers each way. And I was regularly fasting at work and during the days, anything between three and five days a week. Some days 24 hours, some days 72 hours. I was also going for walks at lunchtime and doing other stuff. So my energy and my enthusiasm for life had started to come back. And I was starting to see changes in my personality as well that other people had started to notice as well. And my Eating patterns had changed. My mood had changed, my eating patterns changed, and my cravings had changed, all in that short period of time. In six months, I'd been 47 years just lost in the wilderness. But in six months, it had turned me around completely. To be honest with you, I found a difference within about the first three weeks, and that's all it took to start me on the track of a bit of a redemption, but a brand new life, that's for sure. So this timeline is pretty much a rough guide that I was tracking the time for the weight loss. 
So you can see I started at about a 185. And I know I was over that. I was I broke my scales like I mentioned before at my doctor's surgery, uh, the dermatologist surgery, and they had to buy a new set of scales at about 185. But you can see the rapid weight loss because I was broken and I needed a change. So you can see the rapid weight loss peaked out a little bit, peaked out a little bit, rose a little bit, but nothing's ever straight down. And it held for the, those, you know, those two years. It was great. The one thing that I do find, and it was fantastic, sometimes there on the plateaus, you can see there from maybe a June um, for six months, that I never lost any weight, but I went down two sizes in pants and three sizes in shirts. So it's not all about the weight loss. It's not all about the scale movement. It's the non-scale victories and your body changing, your body adapting. That is going to be the big thing that you'll find and your healthier and healthier lifestyle. Your internal body will dictate how healthy you are. The good thing about the low carb is if someone's majorly obese, that initial response and initial weight loss gets them going, gets them motivated and keeps them going, keeps them on the track. So now I'm up to five, kilo, five uh, years going strong, holding the same sort of weight in maintenance mode now and enjoying, enjoying life completely. As you can see over those first two years, the blood work has been, the results in the blood work have been fantastic. But the main thing is the, the my overall health has changed. The My blood pressure was like 180 over 150 at one stage. Now average is about 117 over 74. My resting average heart rate was 60 plus. It was terrible. Now I can go, my resting average heart rate is between about 47 to 48. Um, most days I used to get four to five hours sleep if I was lucky I couldn't get to sleep I'd wake up snoring the sleep apnea you know, all the time wake up tired now <clears throat> as you can see I can get eight to nine hours sleep minimum every night I don't wake up uh, I've got pretty good heavy deep sleep through most of the night I wake up not hungry uh, it's been fantastic it gives me energy and revitalizes me every day I don't want my afternoon naps anymore. I used to need a nap just not long after I got up in the morning on some days, and then I have a nap in the afternoon. It's just great. Now I have so much energy that it's a uh, new lease on life completely. Okay, so what are some of the achievements I'm pretty proud of over the last, uh, what's it now, four or five years? Starting off early on, I thought the best thing I could do was a five kilometer city to surf in Melbourne. Uh, I was still 130 odd kilos, so it uh, yeah, it took me a while to do it. All the way through to setting different achievements and different goals, your mind is clear. Your mind brain fog from the sugar and the carbohydrates clears up. So it was sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing, because I just kept setting myself bigger and bigger goals. I got back on the bike when I was a junior. As I mentioned earlier, I was always into some sort of sport. I was a junior Northern Territory road track and uh, road champion of cycling. So I always had that great love of getting back on the bike again. So I did 145 Great Ocean Road Ride, which is up and down hills, five hours on the bike. Mind you, 30 hours fasted by this time. So I hadn't done eaten anything for 30 hours and I did the five and a half hour bike ride. Same with my Melbourne Half Marathon. Same with my second Melbourne Half Marathon. 30 hours fasted. So what do you do when you've done two half marathons? Well, you step it up a gear, don't you? So I decided in 2019 or to do the Melbourne Marathon. So I did my first ever Melbourne Marathon in two hours, 30 hours fasted. And I did it in about five and a half hours. Not a great time, but it was a great time. I enjoyed it. It was fantastic. I was did nothing but water the whole time, no gels, no fruit, no nothing at all, no supplements, nothing, just the water to get me through. I kept seeing people along the wayside that were falling over, uh, doing a lot of other stuff. But me, I enjoyed it so much. And I, but even like two days later, I was back training again. So the body has changed, the body has taken on the new 
uh, fats and the protein as a fuel. And I'm not a carb burner or a sugar burner in any way, shape or form anymore. It's fantastic. So here are some of the changes on some of the befores and afters. You can see remarkable changes, especially in my psoriasis, going from 80% PASI score to zero. Uh, this is just amazing, the life that changing, that the, the amount of inflammation has gone away and the uh, irritable bowel syndrome, the pre-diabetic, the sleep apnea, the heavy breathing, the snoring, arthritis, the pain from the arthritis. I've still had the arthritis, but I don't have any of the pains anymore or the joint inflammation. So going from <clears throat> such an obese, 200, 200 plus kilos down to the 100, around the 100 kilos, 95 to 100 kilos has been a remarkable, remarkable difference. But this goes to show you that no one is ever too far gone. If someone's trying to tell you they're too far gone at 30 kilos overweight, they're not. 50, 60 kilos, there's always hope. There's always a way back. And it doesn't mean it's going to take long. It doesn't mean it's a never-ending battle. It's there and it's right within their grasp. I get asked all the time now, what can I eat now? So I've gone full carnivore now in the last three years. I've had no plant material in three years uh, other than my coffee. So, but I still eat my, still drink my coffee, but now it's nothing for me to have a uh, steak or a lobster or prawns or some fish, some chicken. I'll have bacon and eggs if I want for breakfast with a coffee. I'll have hamburgers for lunch. I'll eat out. I'll just adjust the menus where I am. If I want to go out and have a hamburger, I'll have a hamburger. I won't have the bun with it. I won't have the sauces with it. I know what I can and I can't have now. So it doesn't inhibit me in any way, shape or form. It's great. It's empowering. It's if you stand to look at what you cannot eat, you cannot eat, then you are not ready. You haven't got the want. You still got the need. If you get the want, you can find any food anywhere, anytime to eat and not have it be restricted in any way, shape or form. By the way, that one on the bottom right, that's me doing a 1.2 kilo tomahawk steak for my 50th birthday. And you can see I haven't touched the chips at all. And the salad, well, that was just the garnish they bought on the plate. So are you ready to do what I did? Are you ready to take control back of your own life? You be your own superhero. You be your own person that guides you. You need to change. You need to have the want, the want to get healthier. The low carb, high fat, keto, carnivore is the only way that I have ever felt healthier. I am lighter than I was in year nine when I was in school. I'm healthier than I've ever been in my whole life. The depression goes, the brain fog goes, the carbohydrate requirements go, the need for the afternoon naps have gone. My pain from my arthritis is gone. I've gone off eight plus to nine plus medications, saving myself thousands and thousands of dollars a year and also the government for subsidies. So if it's up to you. You're the one that needs to take control. Nobody else can do it for you. We're all here to help you. That's fine. We can help you along the way, but you need to take control of your own life. You need to be the driver of your own bus. Don't let anyone else be the driver of your bus. Well, another great story. Um, what uh, incredible what Darren went through as a, as a kid and then as an adult. Um, Weight Watchers as a kid, that's a tough, uh, tough gig. But I, I thought the most interesting thing was, uh, I mean, if there's no other reason to, uh, to follow this, uh, this program, it, it can come back to money. And Darren's chronic illnesses were costing the Australian taxpayer $20,000 in medication per year. And by changing his diet, he has saved the taxpayer $20,000 a year. And how many more people out there could do the same thing? And that's not to mention the, the myriad toxic side effects of the drugs he was on. 
I mean, he was taking 200 milligrams of tramadol just to get going in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, every medication he was taking, have no doubt they came with their attendant side effects as well. These drugs he was taking were far from benign. It was a cornucopia of toxic pharmaceuticals. Yeah, and also the you know I think the the mental health and and self esteem and self image uh, issues that that he highlighted is uh, is just so important. I don't think people, and when I say people, I don't think medical professionals appreciate the degree of hidden suffering that is associated with obesity. The the sense of shame, the set, the low self esteem. The, the physical suffering, the physical pain, the sleep deprivation and the psychological issues that manifest even directly from that, there is a, there's a hidden iceberg of suffering that's related with metabolic disease and obesity that people don't realise. And I think if the people responsible for the dietary guidelines actually knew how much suffering their guidelines were causing or at least could prevent and weren't preventing, I think they'd recant in a second. Mm. And, you know, did a remarkable job really with very little help. I mean, he basically did this himself. Well, basically, I mean, as you saw, he just went and got a two-week subscription to meal plans online. So this was five years ago, back in 2016. So, I mean, things are a little better nowadays. We've got, you know, people developing apps like your app, the Defeat Diabetes app, which can give you a little bit more support. But basically... He had a huge strength of character to know what he wanted. He was motivated to get it and he needed to get it. I mean, we could say, you know, he was desperate, but he was really motivated. I mean, and I, I guess it was sort of hum some of the points he talked about were almost humorous when he went and got uh, these weight loss pills with, you know, unknown chemicals in them from a tailor in Thailand who was importing them from India. I mean, God only knows what they were going to do. Yeah, but look, sure, we can say that's desperation, but if nothing else, it shows you he really, really wanted it. And when he figured out how to do it, he went and did it. I think people always say to me, oh, you know, how do you keep motivated? How, you know, how do you keep on this, this diet uh, and so on? But you know, when you see the changes that, you know, obviously very dramatic in his case, but, but you see, you know, everyone sees the changes to their, uh, to their body, to the way they feel, to their weight, to their, uh, to their blood uh, glucose, et cetera, et cetera. Surely that is the most motivating thing uh, of all once you, uh, and you feel so much better. So I, I don't think that, uh, you know, people say, oh, it's too hard, it's too difficult to stick to these diets. But when you see the results and when you're feeling so good, it's not hard. Well, and when you see, you know, he's obviously moved to the animal-based diet, uh, as he showed us towards the end of his lecture there, but, you know, when you look at one kilogram of tomahawk steak and you compare that to what he said he used to it, steamed vegetables, you know, I know what I'd rather. <laughs>